there's going to be multiple parts to this video just because I can't make it all in one. But what we're going to do and talk about is regenerating some old exhausted DI resin. Now, the first thing you need to do is measure out your DI resin. I'm going to call this 250 mils of DI resin. So you need twice that amount of water. I have 500 milliliters of DI water right here. And that 500 mils of DI water requires 88 grams of sodium hydroxide. Now this is gonna get extremely hot, so that's why you need borosilicate to really do this. But go ahead and add it in, let it get to stirring. And we're gonna speed through this process and I'll come back with Now the next thing to do is take your DI resin and get it in the container that you're gonna use. Now the reaction that you're gonna see take place when I put the sodium hydroxide solution in is the anion resin, which is your blue resin, is gonna become immediately regenerated and float to the top. The cation is gonna to fall to the bottom. And what's happening is the hydroxide ions in the solution are gonna reattach themselves to the anion resin. And that's gonna make it lighter than anything else. That's why it's gonna to float to the top. The cation is gonna suck in all the sodium ions. That's going to make it heavier than the solution and the anion resin, so it's gonna float all the way to the bottom and that's gonna leave the clear solution in the center. Now let me take a sip of brew and show you what happens. This stuff can be very dangerous, but it is quite simple. Now you gotta make sure you let this cool down because it is gonna be hot. Pour it all in there. Try and not drop my stir bar. And now you can see that the reaction is taking place. The anion is floating to the top, being the lightest. The clear sodium hydroxide solution is the middle density and the cation is the heaviest. Now we're just gonna let this sit here for a minute and I'm gonna stir it here in a minute. We just not stir the solution, but just shake the jar a little bit. And you'll see all the little anion beads that are stuck down here come to the top. Look at that, they're floating up. Just gotta agitate it just a little bit, not too much. Now this resin behaves quite fluidly. So what that means is we can just pour off the top in order to separate them. You're gonna get some cross contamination, but in my eyes, it's not an issue because this is not a lab. This is just a garage. So you would just take it and get it in frame. And we're just removing just the anion resin. It also helps if you let it cool off for a while. Now, I'm just gonna be pouring these resins through a filter screen. This is my one of choice. I have no idea what the micron size is. It just works perfect for this. And now what we're doing is washing off all the sodium hydroxide that's clinging to this resin right now. I poured a little too much in this filter screen, but that's gonna be all right. And we're just using zero TDS DI water right now. Now, all we do is just take our filter, set it on a cup, and just start pouring it in. Yes, I did drop some, it's totally okay. Pouring it through. And now what we have here is just a little bit of fully regenerated anion resin stored in zero TDS RODI water until it's ready for use. Next step after that is to get your cation resin that's built up with sodium and uh, just get some more water on it. So what you wanna do is wash all the sodium that's bonded to it you gotta get it fluidized first before you can filter it out through your screen. Same process though, just dump it through. You see, we've got our cross contamination in there, but I really don't care. Now that you have your anion separated and washed, it's time to regenerate it. And that's where muriatic acid comes into play. So if you worked with all these measurements that I have, Start off with 400 mils. You need way less than this, but this keeps it simple. Start with 400 mils of DI water. You're gonna use 100 mils of 31% muriatic acid. 
So we're gonna get it up to 500 so I had to stop the video while I was pouring the acid because Amazon decided it was a perfect time to deliver a package. But all you need, 400 mils of DI water, 100 mils of 31% uratic acid. All you're trying to do is create a solution that's five to 7%. You can actually just use full strength. That will still get the job done. It's just dilute acid is cheaper to use because it only needs to be 5% to get it done. We shoot for 7% to account for any extra DI water being stuck in the resin. And now here comes the part that everybody hates and complains about. So you have your cation resin, pour your acid in there. I fill it up basically to the top. You're gonna see a slight color change, but not much. See, actually, you didn't even need all that acid, to be honest. That's as much as I used. It's just that keeps the numbers simple. So you can see all the anion resin that was in there that I didn't care about. It's floating around and it's already dead. But the reason everybody hates this step is because you need to stir it every 10 minutes for one hour. Now, one thing I didn't talk about, the way I keep RODI water on tap is I just fill up this standard five gallon jug that everybody's got. Take RO line, shove it all the way to the bottom, put a ball valve on it, and I start a siphon. That simple. Obviously all my work is done here on the ground, but you just open it up, always on tap. All right, the first 10 minute timer has went off, so now it comes time to stir it. Once again, look at that. You can see the cross contamination with the anion resin. Once again, don't really care, but just give it a stir. That's it, just a little one. I just used this big boy metal rod. I mean, normally I'm working with a way deeper container, but I made everything small just to make it easy for the video. Now that my final timer has went off, I've went ahead and poured some of the cation resin on top of my screen. And I like to wash it back in my container so I'm not 100% just wasting a bunch of DI water. I just get to reuse it. So you just rinse, and rinse, and rinse, and rinse, and rinse. Now what you want to do, since this has been filtered off, just get it in there with your anion resin. And start filtering the rest. Since that's all done, everything is rinsed in together. You just get it in some RO water, stir it up. And that totally mixes it. And this is how I store it. Just like that, baby. Since it's all done and packed up for storage now, I have regenerated, ooh, probably four of these containers right here. And I mean, it's, there's a decent amount of resin in there, you know? I've done four of those for roughly 40 bucks. That's a lot cheaper than buying that resin, if you ask me.